All right, so I had a few people who were confused about the different appearances of the facet dislocation. So to start, I wanna show you a unilateral facet dislocation. What I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna set my uh, center of rotation here um, at the facet level on both sides, okay? And let me just make sure that's lined up, okay? So now what I wanna do is I'm going to grab these left, oops, I'm on the wrong tool. The left side of facets, and I'm going to bring this up here, and I'm just locate it. And notice how we get a spondylolisthesis, anterior translation of the vertebral body, as I bring this over to lock that facet down in front of the one below. So if we look down here through the neural canal, you can see that uh, the more cephalad segments are anteriorly translated relative to the levels of the ones below. And then we have this oblique view where these uh, sets of articular pillars, which are paired, are oblique, and then these ones are well superimposed. And uh, and that's what this looks like. So you'll see, you know, one group of the facets all paired and the other ones will be paired and, uh, up to the point that they have the spondy where the facet dislocation is. And then you'll look for that naked facet hanging out there on the inferior surface. And then this one sitting out here naked as well. Uh, but it projectionally can be a little bit difficult because it will line up with the facets on the opposite side. All right. So let's just send that over to our, uh, renderer here and, uh, we'll see what that looks like uh, in x-ray format. Okay, so I'm going to change this over to an x-ray view, and then we can see uh, kind of how that looks. So if we just line these sets up nicely. You can see we've got our paired articular pillars over on this side, uh, and then these ones will also line up. So you have to notice that there's some obliquity here at the level of the spondylolisthesis, and then we have a naked facet here and a naked facet here. So if I uh, just jump back here into kind of a bone view, you can see uh, how that correlates. All right, now that we covered a unilateral facet dislocation injury, let's look at bilateral facet injuries. And so the first stage uh, with the lower energy mechanism is that we're just going to tear our capsular structures. So we can tilt this here and see how we get this asymmetric uh, widening of the joints where we've uh, torn the posterior ligamentous structures here. And now we have these non-parallel facet articular surfaces. So this would be a facet subluxation injury. And then as those forces progress, we're going to get anterior translation of the whole uh, vertebral body, which includes the posterior elements, and this would be perched facets. So usually perched facets are just going to have a little bit of overlap like this, uh, and typically they're going to have some kyphotic angulation here like this. So this would be a perched facet injury where there is still some overlapping uh, articular surface, but we still have this traumatic spondylolisthesis because of that uh, anterior translation as the facets have ridden up. Uh, and then if they keep going, they'll ride right over the top and they will drop down in front of the level below. And that's called locked facets. And by this stage, we really have a rather impressive traumatic spondylolisthesis. Um, so notice with unilateral and bilateral facet dislocation injuries, we almost invariably will have some degree of spondylolisthesis. So that's the level you have to scrutinize to look for this facet dislocation injury. Um, facet subluxation would be the only one where you may just have uh, some what looks like a postural kyphosis or something like that, um, but not a definite spondy. But if you see a cervical spondy in a traumatic setting, that's the level you really want to spend a lot of time scrutinizing the posterior elements to look for uh, some type of facet injury.